Stock Market Weekly Recap, baby. You know what's up. And you already see up top here, right here, from this little push notification, whatever you want to call it. U.S. stocks had their best week in 45 years. That's right. So let's get into that. Uh, we'll get into uh, the indices, then my portfolio and my opinion on um, what's coming up for the market. And then following that, we'll get into some news. All right. So for the Dow Jones <clears throat> on the five-day, uh, we had one negative day, really. Um, so if you're talking about uh, Monday, uh, Tuesday was a down day, actually. Um, but on the five-day, technically we're closed today. It's Friday, so good Friday, we're closed. So if you take five-day into effect, it's uh, we're up 10 Point seven seven percent. Mhm. Ten point seven seven percent, baby. That's what I'd like to call a good week. Um, I don't know about you, but I call that a good week. So one month now, positive. Positive? Really? That seems wild to me. But yeah, positive twelve percent for the month. Three months though. Think about it. Down eighteen point nine or zero nine, and year to date down sixteen point eight nine. So, um. All things considered, we are still technically down um, nearly 20%, you know, from this initial drop. Um, so where you value that is is certainly up to you. But if we look at the S&P 500, yet again we'll see a similar story: 10.4% up for the week, 12.46 up for the month. Um, year to date, down only 13.65 at this point. So for nearly 14% only down, which is not. Not that far down, all things considered, for this um, current crisis we're facing. And the NASDAQ, even a, another different story. Up 8.9, which is, you know, it lagged the Dow for the week, which is pretty crazy to think about it. But there's a lot of stocks in the Dow that were like financial, stuff like that that you don't consider that moved up a lot more as a response to how much it moved down before. So that's why you see the Dow is a little bit higher for the week. But um, year to date, the NASDAQ's only down 9% at this point. And it's positive on a yearly basis. Positive if you look a year out. What? What? That seems crazy to me. It seems crazy. Uh, makes you think about what's what's to come. And we're looking at my portfolio. Not many real additions here to note, but I did want to mention on the um, one week for me, uh, you know what I'm saying, up 18.5%, nearly 20% up, which is what I deserve. <laughs> The only real additions here is I added dividend reinvestment to my portfolio. Um, so the first person uh, to actually get some of that dividend reinvestment is, that's right, Iron Mountain. So it's a company that I'm, you know, I'm okay with. I love having dividend reinvestment because I'm I'm down on my position. I was down on my position, and it went ahead and invested the uh, fifteen dollars forty six cents I got for dividends, reinvested it right away that day that I got paid for it. <laughs> what can I say? That's pretty exciting. They invested it same day when I got dividend reinvestment. That's what I like about Robinhood. They're they're really rocking it with this dividend reinvestment thing. Fractional shares, they're just they're killing it. Um, that's my first real addition with those fractional shares. Other than that, I'm still adding my um, hundred dollars a week uh, to this portfolio and see what it can do. Um, I find it exciting. I do have some. Uh, some dividends coming up. Uh, let's see if it'll let me show the history here without anything too weird going on here. If it'll work. But I do have some dividends coming up that I plan to obviously have reinvested as well because I set everything to be reinvested. Um, so obviously it doesn't want to be nice to me, but if you're considering uh, dividend reinvestment, I say yes, it's a very good idea. Um, my opinion on what the market's going to do from here on out is an interesting one. So if you think about it, obviously we had some analysts call for a V-shaped re recovery. V-shaped. Um, so if you think about the Dow Jones, uh, if we look three months out, uh, let's make it six months out so you get a better picture. They're talking about a V-shaped recovery, meaning from this high point, they expect it to do, go down and make one trip back up, which right now it is on the one trip back up. Um, the question becomes, though, is that uh, something that's even feasible? 
Uh, well, my opinion here is I wish it kind of waited just a little bit longer. First off, so I could buy more stock. Uh, I'm already buying more stock as is because I'm still down on some positions. But um, I think there may be another downward move coming up here and it's because of the fact that in late April here starting the week of the 20th we really get the kickoff of earnings season so if you look at the week of the 20th that's when you get your key players like your Facebook over on your right hand side here you can see Starbucks, Ford, um, companies like uh, Netflix, TD Ameritrade, Coca-Cola these are some key investments that will be reporting earnings uh, and heck We'll see how that looks. Um, obviously, if these big companies are reporting as bad of earnings as people are expecting, I could see there being a very, very bad uh, uh, little impact from it. I could see the whole market tank it for another, you know, two weeks or so, um, whenever the major companies are reporting earnings, and then hopefully, if we recover from this economic nightmare, right? Um, we can see that they post good guidance for the next following quarter. Uh, maybe that's the case. I don't know. I don't know exactly how it's going to be. So we'll see. I'm excited to see. Um, I'm excited to see what happens here. So uh, let's let's go into the news now. Uh, I just you know we don't know what's going to happen with the market. So let's just let's just be positive. Hope we get some good earnings for some of these companies. And if not, it'll be good later. If we get good prices, I'm all in. I'll put a lot more money in, baby. Woo. So stocks soared into close um, of the top three indices finishing more than 7% higher. Another massive day for us, you see, on uh, April, or April 6th here. Um, and that's because uh, in New York, they saw a effectively flat two-day growth in uh, death rate. So two days, they had effectively flat death. And Italy reported the lowest number of new virus infections in three weeks. Now that is fantastic. Now, as far as what you consider a peak, I frankly would consider this a peak for this. Um, obviously, Italy already hit their peak, but for the United States, I think it's the peak for one main reason. So, if there's any place that's not well equipped for any sort of pandemic or virus, it's New York. It's just a fact of life. It's way too densely populated. People are shoulder to shoulder every single day. The subways are packed. You can't even breathe on them. That's a place that was destined to be destroyed by any sort of pandemic like this. And if you think about spreading to the rest of the country, there's not as many hotbeds like you would see there. Unfortunately, we have idiots like uh, the mayor of New Orleans who told people to go out and celebrate Mardi Gras, and now they're one of the biggest hotbeds too. Um, frankly, the guy should be tried um, for criminal negligence, but uh, that's another one's opinion. Um, but overall, I think we are at the peak and I think we're going to find a slower decline now in terms of what you see as far as death and um, uh, death and hospitalizations. And that's for a good reason. For one, I think it's really exciting that we're um, starting to use a couple different drugs that have been you know, known to be useful in other situations. Um, typically, malaria is the number one situation that have, these have been successful with. So these drugs are getting reutilized and put towards this, and a lot of them are showing good success. And we're not having to put people on ventilators, and we're not having people die as much. So that's an exciting thing. We're also getting a lot more tests out there, more than ever before. It is crazy the amount of testing they've, they've ramped up. It's, it's significant. Um, so I think we're at our peak because the less densely populated areas will not have as bad of an impact uh, as far as deaths are concerned. I don't think it is, because we're not going to be finding an absolute blowout of ICU units. You know, the, the intensive care units aren't going to be blown out um, by so many people, because there's not as many people. We have the ability to spread out and social distance more than they do in New York. You can't social distance in New York. Sorry. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm pretty excited for that. And I think investors will keep buying in um, as you see, that, that number keeps decreasing. So that's why I think this, this V-shaped recovery is certainly a possibility. I see it more of a W because I think earnings could uh, could hit us pretty hard, but we'll see. Um, Boeing is su suspending production of its 787 factories in South Carolina due to the pandemic. Um, and it puts all final assembly of its commercial airlines on hold. Well, they're not getting any business anyways regardless, but... 
Boeing just continues to be an absolute piece of garbage company. And if you hadn't bought out of it by now, you're pretty well too late. But Boeing is going to be in some big, big pain. Um, there's no doubt coming up here. Obviously, they have they don't have the balance sheet to survive uh, the no business that they're going to be getting. They don't have the balance sheet to survive all the legal expenses they were having for the 737 MAX. And this is just even worse. So they were going to cut their dividend anyway. They did cut their dividend completely, or as they would say, quote-unquote, suspended. Uh, it's going to be a long-term thing. Boeing is going to get a bailout from the government, and they're not going to be able to pay a dividend for at least a year, at least a minimum of a year until they pay that off. Uh, just part of the stipulations of a government bailout, they can't pay a dividend until they pay off the loan. And if they don't pay off the loan for over a year, well, you're not getting a dividend for over a year, sorry. And even then, their balance sheet's so weak, I don't see if they're going to be returning that dividend for two years, in, in my opinion. So, Boeing, not a company I'd be invested in right now, just because they, they're, they're blowing things pretty rough. You've got Major League Baseball, um, or is this, you know, as we like to say, uh, copyright free league would say, um, big league baseball. Mulls start in May? Hmm. Um, they might start playing games with no fans in stadiums in the Phoenix area in May. Interesting to think about. Obviously, the no fans thing would be weird. Um, again, my full opinion is I do think by mid May, most things will be up and running again. I frankly think that's the case, especially by June. There's no doubt by June we'll be up and running. Because I think the government's really at a a point where they want to keep things going. They don't want to go into an absolute economic downfall and have a nightmare. We want things up and running. Um, and I think if we can handle this, if we have drugs that can help uh, treat this, I don't think the fear will necessarily be there. And I think people will be out and they want to return to their normal lives. Trust me. A lot of people take their normal lives for granted probably. Obviously, my life's still normal. I, you know, I'm at home. I do schoolwork. I go to work still. Literally, it's my normal life. I'm busy 24-7, so um, I've got no problem. I've been working 70 hours a week lately, so hey, I'd love for things to return to normal. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> get it? You see, because I'm working too much, but um, regardless, uh, I think this is a good sign. Obviously, it's, it's a very positive sign. You love to see it, and if they do, maybe more major sports come back. It's just real exciting stuff. Um, and obviously, if, the ba if baseball's doing it, you'll see a, a bigger economic uh, recovery, too. So investors get excited about that. We also see Dr. Uh, Anthony Fauci here um, says that the U.S. death count related to uh, the virus is now lower than initially thought. And I think it's really awesome, and I called it from the start, but um, they adjusted the scale now where originally they had 140,000 to 200,000 deaths as pretty much their minimum, or 140,000 was their minimum. They've kind of adjusted that now where you see 160, 180, I think, is the top range now, and they've really lowered that, and that excites me quite a bit. And I knew it would get that way because I knew we'd find a solution, and I think people would would wisen up and, and start making this, um, start acting a little smarter. And I think, obviously, the... You know, increased tests help quite a bit. The face masks help quite a bit. We have a lot going for us, and, and hopefully uh, things go well. But he anticipates uh, a turnaround uh, in terms of these numbers. But the virus affects, uh, efforts should be intensified, so we should keep, keep the social distancing, fight it more than ever, so we can kill as much of it off as we can. Um, sounds good to me, right? Costco sees May, May our March sales pop. Uh, cars go... Cost, Costco, Costco reports comparable sales rose 12.3% um, after uh, fuel uh, and gas were factored out, which is the same thing. So, um, <laughs> I forget what their metric is on that. Actually, what FX is for them? I know what, I know what it is, but I can't think about it. Um, typically, it'd be like fuel and tobacco, but they don't sell tobacco, but. Um, the consensus mark is unethical because analysts didn't adjust their estimates for the pandemic impact. So, comp sales up massively. Love it. Uh, E-commerce sales skied 50% during the month. Uh, and you see that with every retailer there. So, retailers are going to have a freaking good quarterly earnings. And that's what's really going to drive that economic recovery. In my opinion, in terms of market recovery, uh, retailer earnings are going to be huge. 
We also see Disney Plus surpassing 50 million subscribers worldwide. When they didn't expect to hit 60 to 90 million by 2024, they've already hit 50 million. That's absolutely absurd. Um, I see that being 100 million by the end of the year, frankly. So we'll see how that goes. Initial jobless claims continue to 6 million more initial jobless claims. Um, <coughs> not too much of a shocker. Um, I mean, what do you expect? People are out of work for now, and I think it'll give us two more weeks, three more weeks, maybe four more weeks. Maybe Just give me a month. How about that? Give me a month. I think we'll see better numbers in terms of this. People are going to start hiring back. Uh, it'll be a big thing if we get these small business loans out. Obviously, we already authorized 349,000 or 349 million, or billion, I should say. Uh, we need to authorize that extra 250 billion uh, that got blocked by, uh, you know, Senate Democrats because they wanted diversity included in there. But let's just, you know, forget about that. We also see an airline uh, package expected this week, um, this following week, obviously, uh, a bailout package that should be. So uh, we'll see how that goes. For them, um, yep, that's exciting stuff. But meanwhile, Pfizer may have a therapy that may keep the virus from replicating. What? Okay, that's freaking cool stuff. Um, I think we're hoping. <laughs> here's from Donald Trump himself. I think we're looking at a much lower level. I hope uh, than hundred thousand, even even less than a hundred thousand. Um, previous models suggest that a hundred to two hundred forty k. Uh, that's just, this is crazy. Um, government has been helping farmers. Um, U.S. has had 16,000 deaths now. So, uh, this is just exciting stuff. Keeping an eye on Chicago and Boston area, which have been hit pretty hard. Um, it's just wild stuff. So, what more do you want? Look at all these freaking updates. But, uh, we like to see it, so... Deaths are rising. There's a dramatic decrease in the need for hospitalizations, about 200 uh, in New York versus the high of 1,400. Uh, so exciting stuff. Less hospitalizations, which really the main cause of all these deaths is just an over, you know, overblown healthcare system, too many hospitalizations. So if they can keep this up, I'm excited. So hope you enjoyed.